Hey, what's up everybody? It's Daydreams. Welcome back to the channel for another War and Order video. So, I wanted to talk a little bit today. We're in between war videos. I'm, like I said, I'm doing three to four war videos per week. But I wanted to talk about the Alliance territory in War and Order because it's so much different than any other game. And I think it's one of the two major things that makes it completely unique from all other mobile war games. So, if you look at the screen right here, you can see... Our alliance territory it's outlined in orange and then other alliances have different colored territories uh, depending on if they are you know a union like you know one of our allies or if they're an enemy or if they're neutral so orange is us I believe red is enemy and then I believe yeah right there's red for enemy CHA then I believe yellow is for union and then white is I believe for neutral or it could be just uh, you know somebody we haven't marked yet so you have so many that you can mark and there's a lot of reasons why the alliance territory is important i'm going to show you basically how the alliance territory works so if i find my castle i know i am right next to the alliance castle this is the main building it's the first one you're going to place down it's going to form a 12 by 12 square of the alliance territory and you want to put that in a good location that's not going to have a lot of uh like hills and stuff in it like or lakes lakes or hills are going to or little tree patches so if you go to teleport you can actually see the squares that you can either like teleport on so you don't want to place it where there's any of these trees um, where there's not too many of the um, uh, ruins there's no lakes or mountains you can see the mountains there so um, you know I, I learned more and more of this as I went on so this wasn't in the best spot but it's not in a terrible spot you can see that it goes the Alliance Castle's territory would stretch probably out to yeah right out to where uh zeros is so there's only one little lake really um obstructing it and maybe on that corner there might be a little bit of mountains but it was the best spot i could find at the time and the, here's the main thing you see these elite mines you keep these um and you don't get elite mines like in other games uh you don't just get a free one you have to earn them you have to take territory to get these elite mines so when we started you can see this one castle locked up immediately three elite mines and they rotate different resources and they were wooden food elite mines which are the most important at the start of the realm so that's the alliance castle right there's the territory you can see in the red so it's actually a really good alliance castle it had full it had three elite mines and you can teleport all around there's no obstructions not one single obstruction other than the elite mines which are good obstructions they're not even an obstruction so that's the alliance castle now you can also place other buildings which are going to this we placed kind of late this is the alliance temple you can check the details here um, and that's how you activate the alliance skills which are really important I'll actually make a whole other video about the Alliance skills, but you can see the other things like the Elven Oak necessary for researching Alliance production technology. So if this building is lost, the relevant buffs will be reduced. So you need that to keep your buffs up for your Alliance technology, Alliance science. So I left to go help ROK, so I can't donate right now or I would show you that. But um, there's other buildings too that I'm missing. We must have just, we must have placed them in different uh, areas. Now, Here's the thing about Alliance Territory. All these buildings give you some Alliance Territory, but the main thing that's going to give you Alliance Territory are the Alliance Flags, and you can place these around the map. Now, what you want to do with these Alliance Flags is you want to go in the direction of resources, Elite Mines. You want to take up as many Elite Mines as possible, and you want to get as many members inside your territory as possible. So you can see our territory, see how it keeps stretching? Right there's an Elite Stone Quarry. You can see that our territory keeps stretching on and we stole an elite farm from CHA. So we now share this elite farm with CHA and it all has to do with tax and stuff. If you go here to your mail, you can see, where would it be? Um, uh, system notice maybe? No, it's not there. There's a somewhere that it gives you your uh, alliance status maybe. So alliance territory, you can see here. It shows you your territory, and you get daily bonuses based on your territory. So the bigger your territory is, the better off you're going to be. Because, boom, right there, 640,000 resources in the bank. We get that daily. Now, when you gather from someone else's elite mine, you have to pay them a tax when you gather. So right now, we're paying a tax to CHA, and CHA is paying a tax to us. We had taken this from CHA, but they must have found another way to plant a flag down. So 
our goal now would be to take this flag back. So we want to burn this flag here of CHA to the ground and then take our elite mine back completely. And then we want to keep going towards more and more elite mines for CHA. So let's go down to this area and see. So you can see there is KOK. That's um, our alliance, uh, ROK's alliance mine. So we're not going to mess with those, but we're going to look down here and see if we can find. So these are like um, our alliance members farms and stuff. So uh, we don't really want to mess with those. That's uh, our allies farm alliance. So we're not going to mess with those But you're always looking for more and more you can see our this is our southern territory See how we just stretch it you stretch it as far as you can because the flags cost gold gems You either have to do one of two things with uh, the mines with your flags They cost gems or you can place them with all you can also so I want to go for that elite mine Oh, there's two of them we're going for that next we're gonna knock out aod out of this area so i'm gonna show you what the flags um how you do it so you go you click a place you click alliance flag and then you can see that i could probably the you want to go up right there that's going to be like the you just want to get it as far as you can like you want to do the cheapest alliance flag possible so cheapest alliance flag possible wait it won't let me put it there so where can i put it um it looks like it would be right there on this tile there no i guess not that one there nope uh so this is unfortunate i could probably put it in nope we're gonna have to go this way so this might not be perfect but for the video i just want to get one down so we're gonna place it wait it won't let us place it there oh it's because we're on their territory so i have to wait for that mine to go out before i can place it because it's barely touching the KOK territory. So we are going to take those territories. I'll just place another flag. It's not going to be as strategic. But we'll place one here. Just so I can show you what it's like to place a flag. So right there is the flag. And that's going to lock up all this territory. We're going to hit confirm. And then it's going to show you how you can pay for the flag. Now you can spend gems. And it starts out at like 100 gems or 50 gems. And it goes up and up and up as you get more and more flags. We currently have 69 flags. And it's going to take up, um, you can expand alliance territory up to 25 uh, squares. So the more, the more science you have for the alliance flags, the higher the number of flags you can get, the more territory you can take over. So basically, you can spend gems or the alliance points. So I'm going to spend the alliance points. I can't show you how many alliance points we have right now, but we haven't been spending them. We have tons, hundreds of thousands of alliance points. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that. And boom, now we have more territory. And we'll be getting a higher reward every day. We'll rank higher in the territory ranking for the kingdom, for the realm, which isn't really that important. The alliance uh, territory ranking isn't that important. It just basically shows who's expanding the most. But the biggest thing with territory is you want to be going and inching closer and closer to enemies' elite minds. So right now I'm going to say into the chat, 673, actually I can show this, in alliance chat, let's burn this flag and take over aod territory and mines now another thing i want to talk to you about you really need to spend some time picking your alliance territory before you teleport into a new realm remember you can build up your castle to i believe it's level seven before you teleport to a new realm so you really want to scout that out Right when that realm opens up, you need to spend at least probably 10 minutes or 20 minutes looking for a perfect territory that's going to give you give you access to elite mines, level 4 and 5. You want at least level 4 and 5, which is going to be in the kind of middle ring of the map. Um, the map in War and Order, you can't really see much, but you can see our territory. It starts there and then it expands. So you want to be within the level 4 and 5 elite mines. And basically... You want to find an area that's going to be open, but with a lot of elite mines. So that way you can snag at least two to three off the rip like we did with our Alliance Castle. And then be able to grab at least four to five more with flags and other buildings from there. So that's basically what we're doing now. Let me go back down here. This is the territory. You see someone's already going to burn this flag. You got to keep it burning. You know, it might take a couple hours to burn it down if you keep on attacking. You just got to keep it burning and... AOD are a very inactive alliance, so there's no reason we shouldn't keep expanding our territory and try to take over this entire side of the map. It's very important to, to have as many elite mines as possible. I'm going to show you the elite mines now. You go to buildings. We have 17 right now, but look, they, especially when, you know, 
a lot of people are gathering like right now it's pretty calm out a lot of people in the elite mines they're not out attacking so these mines go very fast that's nothing those resources so they get reset then they take time to replenish and then they come back full so a lot of them are replenishing right now as a matter of fact 12 of them are replenishing right now so if we get more it's going to be a lot better you know it's going to be a lot better for us if we get more of them so we got five that can gather eight that are exhausted and then the rest are refreshing so you can see one attack took it down one percent and now it's burning and it'll continue to go down just like in the territory defense uh and of the other events so basically what i wanted to say is is that you also have to keep your territory it's not this isn't like other games in other games you can move your hive where all your castles are and it's no big deal you just you just move and you know as long as you're somewhat close to the middle where you can get good resources or you're not mar marching too far you're going to be all right say you're on the same side as two enemies and you get sandwiched kind of like we are right now well in another game i would just move to the other side with our allies and we'd be perfectly fine and safe because the other side of the map is pretty much empty but in this game you have to hold down your territory because you can't lose all the work that you put in for all these elite mines and all these flags and just up and delete everything and move to the other side it just doesn't work like that that's what makes this game very unique and what i like about this game a lot one other thing i'm going to show you guys that's not a not not about the territory but i'm just going to show you a simple battle report we'll look at we'll look at this one this is a reinforcement that mutant did on my castle when i was uh when i was asleep i let him get on to do reinforcements that way my castle being as strong as it is we always have someone that can um, take care of people if they're being attacked so you can see the details here uh we wiped this guy out um arc zi87 was being attacked so but the cool part is we're not we're gonna watch the recording of the of the reinforcement of the gameplay. So watch. You can watch over your battles. Oops, let me turn that down. You can watch over your battles and learn things. So look, you can see the panda doing work. You can see the mage doing work. You can see that front line doing work. Now a lot of that is a lot of this are his troops. Or um, ARC the 87 troops, but now I join the war. Now my troops and my panda are here. And we just dusted off the remaining troops there. So you can see when you showed up in the battle. So Mutant was a little bit late to get there. But he probably didn't want to burn up a lot of my speed ups. But you can see the remaining troops there. You can see what the the hero, the pets are doing. The panda and the dragon. Very, very cool that you can watch, that you can watch this. And you can learn a lot about the battles in this game from this, guys. And it can, it can really help you improve your gameplay. Because you can see, well... I didn't send as many frontline infantry on this battle and my mage died faster well why is that well you'll learn that the infantry have a lot more health and it takes more times for troops to hit them so if their troops are if their mage are worried about because mage are like the, the best troops in the game so if the enemy's mage are hitting your infantry and your mage are hitting just their mage their mage are going to die twice as fast while you've got a little bit of a buffer there with your infantry to make them shoot at while all your mage cleans up theirs I hope that makes sense to you guys but it's another awesome thing about this game that makes it completely different from all the others so hopefully you guys learned a little about what little bit about war and order in this video make sure you guys smash the thumbs up button teamwork makes a dream work i need you guys help youtube's kind of crappy right now so any like i get is greatly appreciated so thanks for watching guys i'll see you in the next one peace